probably wondering what's with the voiceover and the digital avatar. But not so many people should be able to see my face. What if you all support you? If you just please call me the boy, welcome, welcome back. Bro, I finally had time to actually like watch Deadpool 3 and man, it did not disappoint. So for this video, I thought it would be a good idea to review like all three of the Deadpool movies. Like, share, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, check me out on the Arts, links to everything down below. And with no school guys, I'm on TikTok as well. That's some method. It started with Deadpool pretty much like chilling in the back of the cab. Like, he was like on his way searching for Francis. Francis is a guy that disfigured him. He also gained like superhuman powers because of that. He healed really fast, he's strong, his reflexes are really fast. They're cool film, like very really lonely, so he climbed up in like in the front of the taxi. Dopender. Dopender is the guy who's driving the taxi, and Deadpool and Dopender were really talking. Deadpool was like told him that he's been like a whole year, because he's been like trying to find Francis for a, well, a year. Deadpool noticed that there was like a girl that like Dopender had a picture of, and that was his girlfriend, but his girlfriend was stolen by his cousin. Deadpool was trying to give Dopender some advice about like dating and relationships, and he told him to like not let love go. Deadpool told Joe Pender to stop in the middle of the highway because like he had a feeling like that's where Francis might be. He didn't even bother to like pay the dude. And we like get Deadpool like trying to like color a picture of on the highway. So Deadpool kind of like jump into the middle of the highway. We have some bad guys that was a little epic car chasing. Go back to the X-Men ship, yeah, as in where the X-Men live. Colossus was watching the news and he realized that the guy that was like causing a lot of trouble and mayhem is Deadpool. Colossus called on Negasonic to his forehead or Negasonic for short. Negasonic's ability is that she can like create like little explosion. Colossus have been like trying to recruit Deadpool for years, but like Deadpool is not like really killing the X-Men. Then we cut back to the highway scene where Deadpool is like fighting like all of the goons. He managed to take them all down with only 12 bullets. One of the goons actually like came back from like one of the bullet goons. It turns out like that was a mutant and that has the ability to regenerate as well. And Deadpool kind of like cut him like open up. And that's when we kind of got like a little flashback. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of flashbacks. This is one time Deadpool used to be a regular normal human by the name of Wade Wilson. He used to be like a mercenary. He was like doing a job. It kind of like requires uh, like him to like stop like some guy from stalking this girl. We head to a bar that's named St. Margaret. St. Margaret's pretty much like a hangout place for mercenaries. And also like a place where they can also get jobs at. Here's a friend named Weasel. Weasel is this dude who's pretty much like the bartender and his best pal. There's this bar game called the Deadpool. Pretty much like where you bet on people to die at the bar. And whoever wins kind of like earns some money out of it. We bought like a drink and told it to them to give it like to some other guy. And it kind of like to cause all chaos, to cause all Deadpool to happen. And that's when Deadpool kind of like meet his girlfriend, Vanessa. Vanessa is what we call a lady of the night. To keep it like YouTube friendly. They've been seeing each other for like a whole year and they started like dating and started to like become serious. It was Christmas time. We proposed to Vanessa. Vanessa and before, well, Vanessa and Wade could have like gotten in. They kind of passed out, and it turns out that Wade is terminal and he has cancer. That's the present day at the hardware scene. Deadpool's been like looking for Francis, but he couldn't find him. And they realized like one of the motorcycle phones was Francis. Deadpool managed to like cut him down with the sword, and he was being a life out of him. Francis is a mutant, by the way. He has like enhanced reflexes and he can't feel pain, and he's very strong. Before Deadpool could like beat him up some more, Colossus kind of showed up and like grew Deadpool off to the side. Time to speed things up. Vanessa had been like trying to convince Wade to not leave her, but Wade kind of left. He went to the bar, and Weasel told him that there was this dude that was looking for Wade. The dude's name was Agent Smith. He was like working for some organization that pretty much like give people superpowers. He also offered that they can also treat his cancer. Wade kind of like took the deal. He was like rushed to this facility where they like turn like regular people into mutants and like sell them to the highest bidder. Atrix was running the facility, they injected Wade with like a serum that was designed to activate his X-Team. In order for the X-Team to activate, they had to like torture him, and he's been like tortured like a bunch of times. Then they torture him like one more time, and his mutation kind of kicked in. Wade kind of like caused a little explosion in the place. Ajax and Deadpool kind of fight, with Ajax thinking that Deadpool kind of died. Wade managed to escape the facility. He's been like trying to like talk to Vanessa, but he couldn't like bring himself to do it. Oh, we for everything that happened. And he was like coming up with a superhero name, and he named himself Deadpool after like the bar game. And ever since, like he's been like hunting down anyone who's been associated with Ajax. Oh, by the way, Deadpool was like living with like an old blind lady. He just captured Vanessa and using her like bait to like lure in Deadpool. Deadpool went to the X Mansion to get Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead to help. In the end, 
They managed to rescue Vanessa and killed Ajax. Vanessa and Deadpool got together. That was the end of the movie. What do you guys know? Deadpool 2 is more of a family film, through and through. The movie starts off with Deadpool like clearing and kind of like messing up his apartment a little bit. He was fixing some, some like postal strudels or something. He lit up a cigarette and like, he lit it up with like a cigarette and was climbing on like a barrel of gasoline. He threw a cigarette up in the air and it caused an explosion. A couple months ago, Deadpool has been going international. They can help bad guys, gangsters, the whole time, and everyone. No one was not safe. We got a little montage of Deadpool like beating up some bad guys. There was one in a strip club, there was one in Japan, there was like one in like Sicily, Italy, I think. Eventually like all those jobs like went eventually all those jobs led it to like some ultimate bad guy. That is like the worst of the worst guy. He was like running away from Deadpool while he's trying to get him. He ran into the panic room. He managed to see himself inside. Deadpool is a little frustrated because, well, he gets kind of in a hurry because it's its anniversary with Vanessa and he's trying to like hurry this thing up. The bad guy's goons came in and chased Deadpool out of the place. The Pender was outside waiting for Deadpool and he was like listening to some self-help tape. Deadpool and Dopender got out of there and they were talking about like their lives a little bit. Dopender was not really happy with him being like a cab driver all the time. He wanted to be a contract killer. Deadpool was not really having that. We showed up at the apartment with Vanessa like being a little angry and like he gave like a bunch of like a reasons for like why he's so late, but it was all just a joke. Wade gives Vanessa a ski ball token from the first day. Vanessa gave Wade a birth control device and told her that the baby factory is open and they can actually like start a family now. After they were done baby making, they were like watching a movie and Wade started to like feel a little doubtful about like him being a parent because like he did not like have like a great childhood growing up. He feel like he's gonna mess up that kid. That's what's trying to like, cheer him up by like, saying that kids there's a better chance of being better than we used to be. Then they started like giving off baby names. Eventually they found out where Wade lives and like they made like attack the place. Wade managed to like take out all the guys with the knives. Eventually like the boss showed up and killed Vanessa. Wade killed the boss. Wade has been grieving ever since Vanessa got murdered and like he's trying his best to like keep him so cool. People like try to tell him to like go home. And we've been like at the St. Margaret's for like a couple days. We made it back to like his apartment with Blind L. Blind L kind of like knew about the whole news about Vanessa being dead and trying to like give like Wade some advice. He told him like he could not live without like dying a little bit. We kind of like took some cocaine and pretty much like got coked up. And then we got like a whole montage of Wade trying to kill himself. Eventually we got to the point where he's like on the gasoline exploding. We was traveling to the afterlife and he saw Vanessa. We tried to get to her, but like that didn't work because there was like some sort of barrier. Vanessa told Wade that like his heart was not in the right place. Let me speed things up. Colossus brought Wade to the X-Mansion after like he blew himself up. He tried to like, talk him into becoming an X-Man. Wade is not really having it. Negasonic got kind a of girlfriend. She's a mutant. She has her electrical powers. We get to meet a mutant kid by the name of Russell, and he has like prior genetic powers. He was sent to this orphanage. It was run by like this headmaster that really don't like mutants, and he was torturing them while they're like in the orphanage. We meet Cable. Cable is from the future. He's a mutant who time travels because like he came from a future where the world was destroyed by Russell, and he's trying to like go back in time and try to kill him. Back in the present day, Colossus kind of like brought like Deadpool to like to the orphanage to like stop Russell from like going on a rampage and Deadpool picked up the pieces and put two and two together and figured out that like the orphanage was torturing him. He tried to like kill the headmaster, we ended up being arrested. They were sent to a mutant prison. Pretty much like every single mutant there had like a power dampening collar, which means their powers are gone. Cable tracked Russell down there and he managed to like break it into the prison like taking down all the guards and all the goons. Wade tried to like stop him from like killing Russell and we got a little epic fight scene. Wade went back into the afterlife and he realized that he needed to protect the kid. Wade assembled a team of mutant mercenaries and they called themselves the X-Force. They were planning to intercept a convoy where Russell was heading. The whole thing went sideways with most of the team dying. But Domino, Domino's a mutant with like lust powers. She has she pretty much can get lucky all the time. Russell managed to get himself out of the convoy. Juggernaut was on that same convoy and they both escaped. Russell goes by Fire Fist now and he's trying to like kill the headmaster. Cable showed up and like told him like everything that was gonna happen in the future. 
and how like Russell is responsible for the whole thing. Deadpool, Domino, and Cable went to the orphanage to like stop Russell from being a killer. We got a little epic final fight scene. In the end, Deadpool died protecting Russell. Cable went back in time to save Deadpool. Deadpool like took Cable's time travel device to save Vanessa. And that's the end of the movie. Deadpool 3 did not disappoint. You guys might need to rewatch Loki for this one. Deadpool was like talking to like the audience about like, you know, the fuck of the merger deal and like how long that took. Deadpool was in like North Dakota digging up like Wolverine's grave from the Logan movie and he pretty much was having a little conversation with Wolf Logan's dead body. The TV is kind of like this timeline police and Deadpool is kind of like under arrest by them and kind of wanted by them. The TV agents like try to get Deadpool to surrender but Deadpool wasn't really having that so he pretty much like used Wolverine's dead body and pretty much like beat up like all the TVA agents and killing them. Then we got a little bit of a flashback scene, kind of recapping everything that happened in Deadpool 2. Deadpool was like in an interview with Happy Hogan. He kind of like went to the like the MCU universe and tried to like apply to become an Avenger, but that didn't work out. He went back to his like main universe and in his universe he kind of like like stopped being like a hero and stopped being Deadpool. He kind of worked with Peter, that's the guy from the last movie, and he was working with Peter. He was like selling cars. Peter's trying to like talk Deadpool into going back into being Deadpool again, but like Wade is not really having that. After he got home from work, everyone threw him a surprise party. Everybody was there, like a song King's Warhead, Yu-Gi-Oh, Dopinder, Vanessa. Vanessa and Deadpool kind of like broke up a little bit and he's not He's trying to like hide the pain from it. After Wade blew up the candles, the TVA showed up to his universe and like kind of kidnapped him and took him to the TVA headquarters. Then we're introduced for a little big bad. His name is like Paradox. Well, he goes by Mr. Paradox. He's like one of the leaders of the TVA. He's trying to like offer like Deadpool a chance to like join the MCU. And like Deadpool is super excited about this. He got like a new suit. He got like adamantium katanas now. Deadpool and Paradox were talking a little bit. And Deadpool kind of found out that um, Paradox is planning to destroy his universe and what was it, he found out what like an anchor being is. An anchor being is kind of like a, well, the glue that kind of holds their universe together. Deadpool's like anchor being kind of died. It was Logan from the Logan movie. Paradox is working on like some sort of like time accelerator thing that's pretty much designed to like wipe out like any other universe and desire. You see, well, the TV used to do this thing called proning where they pretty much like delete like certain timelines that shouldn't be there, but they kind of like change the mind and kind of like keep a watchdog for like other universes that exist or emerge and make sure it like stay the way it is. And Paradox was not like feeling it like that. So he pretty much like went like against like the TVA, like things to go back to the way it used to be. Deadpool broke Paradox's nose and stole his little time travel gizmo and the rest was history. After Deadpool was like done with the TVA, he kind of like used like the time travel thing to like go to like other multiverses to find like another Wolverine and then we got like a little montage with that. Things went horribly wrong until he like ran into a universe where Wolverine was at like a bar and he was hated by everybody for some weird reason and he went back with the TVA with that Wolverine. Paradox explained that he's like the worst Wolverine that ever existed and Paradox sent him to a void, kind of like a metaphysical junkyard where like every single timeline that has ever been deleted gets sent there. Alright, time to speak things up. Deadpool and Wolverine were having like a little fight, but it got interrupted when Johnny Storm from like the Fox like universe of the Fantastic Four kind of like showed up and like warned them about Cassandra Nova. Cassandra Nova is like Charles Xavier's twin sister, but she's evil, and she has the same powers as Charles, but a little different. Unlike Charles, like she Charles can like go inside people's heads. For her, she got like touch people to get inside people's heads, and only that she got a healing factor and she's a telekinetic. Deadpool and Wolverine kind of like escaped Cassandra Nova's little hideout and pretty much like was like made a deal to pretty much work with each other to get back to their universe to like stop like Paradox from deleting their universe. Then they run into like a Deadpool variant, told them about the Deadpool core, like alternate versions of him. The Deadpool variant that we meet kind of did get like Deadpool and Wolverine their like ride. The Wolverine and Deadpool kind of like end up fighting again, but they got like so tired so they passed out and they were asleep. X-23 took him to their hideout, and that's when we get to meet the rest of the resistance. There was Blade, Electra, Gambit, and X-23, and that was it. They were the only like heroes that were fighting back against Cassandra Nova. They all teamed up and they all went together like to like Cassandra's place and pretty much like had like a little epic final battle. Wolverine decided to spare Cassandra's life 
and in return, she kind of like gave him a way back home. The Cassandra found out about like Paradox Flow Machine to destroy like universes and realities, and she kind of like took it for herself. She kind of like sent like the Deadpool core after like Wolverine and Deadpool, and we got a little epic final fight. In the end, Deadpool's universe is safe, Cassandra Nova is dead, Paradox got caught, Deadpool and Vanessa are together again, and Wolverine and Deadpool are like best. Deadpool 3 honestly just live up to the hype, guys. I swear. Bro, the cameos, the references. Bro, I gotta admit, Wesley Snipes coming back as Blade. Now that was highly unexpected, though. I mean, I was expecting. And I gotta admit, Wesley Snipes, he still look good, man. But let's be honest, man. As a black man, I know, I know, black do not crack like ever, man. In my honest opinion, though, oh god, I love Hugh Jackman in the comic book actor costume, though. Now that was pretty good, though. Not only he didn't wear the yellow one, he wore like the brown and like, well, the brown and yellow one from like the X-Men comic. Now that, I think that version was from the 80s. I think it was like the mid 80s, I think. Or somewhere, I don't know, somewhere in between there. But that was freaking good. And I liked what they did with the CGI, like Hugh Jackman, Wolverine, being like five foot three, because that actually is his height in the comics. Honestly though, I, I wish they had this kind of technology like years ago when the first X-Men movie kind of came out. It kind of would have like fixed the whole problem, but hey, technology, it moves at its own space in my opinion though. Know. Honestly, I did love like the 2000s X-Men costumes. I really did like that because it looked like pretty cool. Fun fact, Ryan Reynolds and like was it, Wesley Snipes, they were both in the, what was it, I think it was the Blade Trinity movie. Okay, guys, let me know in the comments down below. If you guys want me to like do a review on like the Blade movies, I'll probably do it somewhere around Halloween. Because, well, you know, Blade's a vampire, and it kind of isn't like in that spooky Halloween kind of territory. I thought it would be a good idea to do that, though. But guys, let me know in the comments down below if you guys think I should, like, do a review on, like, the Wesley Snipes Blade movie. Okay, Tanny Cha- or, okay, man, I cannot pronounce the dude's name. But, like, Danny Chano, um, from the Terminator movie from 2013, I was not expecting him to be Gambit, though. But I remember hearing a rumor about Tanny Chatham like being like some sort of Gambit. You know, the Gambit movie like that was about to happen a couple years ago, but that kind of got scrapped. Oh man, I just bro, I was like, thank you, my prayer has been answered. Okay, bro, Destiny King like really grew up like ever since the Logan movie. Wow, just like whoa, time really has been flying. It's been like seven years since like, the Logan movie came out. I remember like watching it on screen night with my old man, and bro, it got me crying. Man. It had me deep in tears. But, like, thank God that Daphne King, like, said yes to the project. Because I cannot picture anyone else playing X-23 right now. Given the fact that in the comics, X-23 took on, like, Wolverine's place as Wolverine in the comics nowadays. And Elektra, oh my God, man. Like, Elektra, what was it, Johnny from the Fantastic Four, the Fox Fantastic Four from 2005? Bro, now that was pretty good. I was not expecting a Chris Evans cameo. I was not really expecting that. I mean, I thought he was going to be like an alternate version of Captain America when we first saw him. But like, it, I'm just saying, like, it looked good though. And I just gotta admit, like, they add the Fantastic Four with it. Because, okay, in case you guys don't know, the Fantastic Four is like the Fantastic Four flying car. Where they like, you know, fly around. The version that they have, bro, that is definitely like comic book accurate though. I really did like the suit from the first Fantastic Four movie. I liked it. It was pretty good. It kind of looked like the ultimate. Wait, not no, 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 it didn't. It didn't look like the ultimate version, but it somewhat is similar. In case you don't know, the ultimate universe is another universe in the Marvel Comics. Bro, like the level of like dirty humor that they got in this movie, bro. I'm thinking God that uh, Kevin Feige greenlit the project. I hope that they never ever make like Deadpool like a great PG-13 level film. Because like, I'm gonna be honest with you, that kind of sucks. You know what, there was like a bunch of easter eggs and references to like the first like, what was it, the first three Deadpool movies? And we got like a slow motion like opening like title sequence. So that was definitely from the first movie, now that was pretty good though. And what was it, the slow-mo rotation to his heart, now that was pretty, now that was obviously from the first movie. You know, Deadpool would take down like the TVA goons, bro, definitely from like the first movie, man. I'm just saying like from the jumping and the flipping, I mean like turning in midair, and, like what was it, throwing like Wolverine skeletons around, like they're like throwing stars and knives. Okay, let's be honest, if like Wolverine really did exist, his bones would probably be as sharp as crap, man. And I really did like the fact that he kind of like, like used Wolverine's bones to give himself like adamantium plugs, 
I think there was like a reference to like a comic book version of him where he did became Wolverine or like I don't know some sort of fusion between them. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'll probably check that out later after I'm done recording this whole thing. The dancing sequence like for the third film, I really did enjoy that scene. The fun fact about that song though, that song actually showed up in the second X-Men movie. It was like in the middle of a chase scene where Rogue, Wolverine, Pyro, Iceman were like on the run from striking the goons. Okay guys, I'm definitely gonna review like the original X-Men trilogy. Probably after this, if I do got a little time. Honestly though, I just gotta get back to like Tanny Tatum playing Gambit. I gotta admit, he did like a good job. He actually does like interesting with him like performing like the accent that Gambit has in the cartoon. He does like remind me and he kind of like sound like Gambit on the cartoon. I mean, not X-Men 97, from the original 90s cartoon. Bro, he sounds exactly like him, I swear. Maybe I just need to have my ears check, I don't know. Point is, like, the accent, I feel like it's so good, due to the fact that I am, like, from the South, you know? And the way that they introduced them with, like, a plane car flight floating in the air for, like, a three seconds, I was like, wait, man, what the heck is there? And then I realized it was Gambit. And the way they displayed Gambit's powers, like, bro, it looked, like, wicked insane. Bro, it looked a little better, it looked, like, ten times better than, like, X-Men Origins Wolverine. Because in case you guys don't remember, in case you guys are not, like, really, like, the hardcore X-Men fans, like, bro, like, the way that they portray Gambit's powers, honestly, I thought Gambit was a telekinetic when I first, like, watched the movie. Well, X-Men Origins Wolverine, that's where I thought. But it's really just, like, he just had the ability to turn, like, any objects to exploding. I mean, I've been known that. I'm just saying, like, the way they depicted in X-Men Origins Wolverine, honestly, it made it look like he was just a telekinetic, and that was it. If you guys type in maximum effort, like, down in the comments down below, I will definitely, like, do, like, more Deadpool and Wolverine art. Probably, like, after the video, if I can get at least, like, I don't know, somewhere around 10, 13 likes at least, I'll definitely, like, do, like, like, more Deadpool art and more, like, superhero art, bro. I'm taking requests, man. Just leave a comment down below saying maximum effort, and boom, it is done. Alright, let me get into the first movie. The first movie, honestly, I really did enjoy the first movie, man. I've been, like, super stoked and, like, super drunk out. I love the X Gonna Give It To You. It was a song by GMX, like, back in the 90s. It was, like, wicked cool, man. I used to listen to this song every time I work out. And sometimes I still listen to it a little bit. I'm just saying, like, the soundtrack to, like, all the movies are good, especially the first one. Bro, the first one was great. I really did like the highway scene, like from the first movie, like him taking down 12 guns with 12 bullets. Now that is like really good though. That was like executed pretty good. And I really did enjoy that part. And know that we got some cameos like from certain new characters like in the first movie. There's one character by the name of Mero. Mero is like a mutant who has like the ability to basically like create like spikes out of her body using her own bone marrow and like her one of like the problems with marrow is that she kind of like have like spikes coming out of her body like outside of her back that was like a good reference and a good cameo like from that character at least you know that niggas on teenage forehead like first like outfit like in the original movie like the first one it looked exactly like the new mutant version in case you guys don't know like who the mut new mutants are they're pretty much like a teenage X-Men team and like have like a costume like that. Like it look exactly like that though. TJ Miller, I think I did, I mean I seen him in like a couple movies like years ago. I remember like doing like a review on this movie called um, She's Out of Your League. It kind of had him in it. It was like a romantic comedy. Okay, TJ Miller's movies are kind of like a little funny though. It's kind of like a little, sometimes it's on a raunchy side, but most of the time he is kind of like well known for like doing like raunchy like level comedy movies though. But again, TJ Miller, like, is pretty good though. He's a good actor, in my opinion. Okay, this is like from, like, all the where man, X-Men fans were being, like, said, so good this year, man. We're eating so good this year. And with, like, Deadpool and Wolverine, like, being in the mix, X-Men 97, Kamala Khan, like, being a mutant from the Marvels, and all that, Namor being a mutant officially, like, in the MCU, and now we only got, like, Scarlet Witch as a mutant now, because, like, years ago, like, they couldn't, like, like, bring her, like, introduce her as a mutant in the first place. She was nothing but a genetically modified human. But now they're able to finally say mutant. Thank God, man. As an X-Men fan, I solely am, like, I gladly appreciate it, man. That was, like, awesome. It is a good time to be an X-Men fan. It just is. Okay, I did, like, the Western, like, kind of, like, kind of feel for, like, the, like, Wolverine and Deadpool, like, fighting the first time. 
I really did like that. It kind of like gave me like a whole like Western part with like Deadpool and Wolverine like you know fighting like you know doing like a showdown like you know how like in certain like Western movies like there's a showdown between two people they're shooting each other like at noon time like at 12 o'clock. It kind of just like gave me that kind of vibe and that kind of feeling. Honestly, I, felt, I was honestly disappointed with Sabretooth and like Wolverine fighting. I was like hoping like for like a really good like longer fight though. Because I'm just saying like the way they hyped it up, it kind of does like give it like a good... I mean it was a, it was a good little misdirect, but I kind of like, felt like a little upset about that. Because like I was hoping to see like a, like a real legit fight between like both the actors. The given the fact that both actors showed up in the first X-Men movie. Okay, my opinion about the second movie, I'm gonna be honest with you. I really did like, went, like, I really did geeked out though. I mean, there was a bunch of references. The fact that that orphanage had like the Essex logo, in case you guys don't know, that would be Mr. Sinister. Mr. Sinister is like this crazy mutant geneticist that kind of like experiments on mutants, trying to like create like the ultimate like mutant. Because if you watch the 90s X-Men cartoon, Mr. Sinister was like the number one like guy who was like trying to like get Gene to type up to have a baby to like create like the ultimate mutant. In the time travel sequence, I gotta admit, no, that was pretty good. Like, in the middle of the time travel sequence, you can actually, like, see the extra, like, leaving. I think it's probably from, like, I don't know, I guess, like, the present day of that time. I don't, I'm not sure. And only that, I'm glad that they, like, finally, like, made, like, I would say, like, the Deadpool, like, the second Deadpool movie, the way they brought, like, Juggernaut into the whole thing, they made him, like, more comic book actor and way better looking version. I mean, it's just saying, like, that version of Juggernaut is, like, way better than, like, the last year version of Juggernaut. I mean, like, the last dance Juggernaut was, like, a little iconic because, you know, I'm the Juggernaut. You know what I mean. You, you know, guys, you guys know what I was about to say. But I couldn't say that. I'm, your boy's trying to get monetized, so I had to, like, keep the language at a minimum, at least. I kind of like the idea of Cassandra Nova, like, the evil twin sister of Carlos Xavier. Originally, like, she came as, like, a comic book character by, by this dude named Grant Morrison, like, back in 2000. And guys, fun fact about X-23. X-23, just like Carly Quinn, she didn't start out as a comic book character. She kind of started out as like a, a cartoon character on the show X-Men Evolution. Okay, I mean the cameos were good as well. But like, I got mean, one of the most shocking cameos was Henry Cavill's like Wolverine. Now that I was not expecting. That was like, whoa, that was out there. I mean, that could, I'm just saying like, he kind of does like fit the Wolverine look a little bit. I'm just, just, I'm just saying, like, him, like, being in costume and character as, like, Wolverine, I mean, that is just pretty crazy and wild, though. But that's just, that is good, man, in my opinion. You know, with the Henry Cavill, like, cameo, it kind of got you thinking, are, is Marvel, like, trying to, like, get, like, Henry Cavill to, like, play Wolverine in, like, the 6-2, I mean, the 6 one 6 universe? I mean, that would be, that would be a somewhat of a good idea. I'm just saying, like, the way he looked into it, like, the way, I'm just saying, like, it's just, I'm just saying, man, it's just giving me the idea that it would be a good idea for Henry Cavill to play Superman. I mean, not Superman, I mean Wolverine. My bad. Okay, now, uh, Jesus, man. I'm just geeking out, man. I'm gonna geek overload. Going back into a Deadpool 2. Okay, another, like, Easter egg references is when, like, Cable was trying to shoot at him and Wade, like, failed to, like, deflect, like, all the bullets. I mean, that was like a good nod in Easter egg to like X-Men Origins Wolverine. I mean, that's where we kind of got introduced to Deadpool in the first place. And given the fact that Ryan Reynolds did play Deadpool, I really did enjoy that reference. That was like pretty cool. And over there, we got like a bunch of nods to like Deadpool, like having his mouth showed up shut. And like, it was like a bad idea. Again, another good callback to like X-Men Origins Wolverine. Okay, a couple questions I just gotta ask though. Um. Why did the TVA went after Laura, like, it, I mean, after, like, the events of Logan, like, why did they got rid of her before? I mean, why did they put her in the void in the first place? And where the heck is Domino? Like, seriously, like, why, why was she missing out of the whole thing? I mean, I did, like, Zavik was, like, dealing with some movie stuff, and, like, everything else. I'm just saying, like, why, I'm surprised, like, Deadpool did not, like, bring up the character at all. Not even Cable in the third movie, like, I mean, well, he did bring up Cable, but it was just a little throwaway line. Like, not even Domino, like, seriously. There are two versions of, like, Deadpool 2. There's, like, the theatrical version and the extended cut version. When I was reviewing, that was, like, the extended version. And in the extended version, we got, like, more details about, like, the orphanage. 
And not only that, we got like to see some posters and Easter eggs. The headmaster said they will not replace us. That phrase came from the like genocide theory. It's pretty much a theory about like how like in Western countries where let's say in the case of the United States where the majority of people are white, they fear that like people of color or foreigners are gonna take over the country and all that stuff. They're gonna replace them. That's often like rhetoric that came from that theory, which led to a bunch of riots, a bunch of murders happening, even like that church shooting in South Carolina a couple years back. It kind of it kind of is related to stuff like that. And given the fact that like the whole universe of the X Men universe is kind of like a metaphor. I mean, mutants are kind of like a metaphor. You're, you know, you know, civil rights is you know, social justice and all that stuff. So it kind of is a fitting that they kind of like brought that reference in there a little bit. Okay, I love the scene where like Laura was talking to like Logan about like everything that like Logan and Negan did for Laura and everything else. And like, he was talking about the backstory behind him and like why he was so hated. Okay, that would be cool if we, I mean, I wish they did. Like, you know, whenever like they explain like a character's like backstory, you get like a little like visual, like a like a comic book narration of like that whole thing. That would be pretty cool to see that. Some sort of motion comic maybe. Okay, last thought though. Last thought. I, I mean, I gotta admit, Deadpool 3 gotta be like a good conclusion to like the like the Fox universe of like you know of the Marvel universe. I mean, it really is a good conclusion to that, though. All right, your boy gotta go. Like, share, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. Check me out on DeviantArt. And guys, if you guys type in maximum effort in the comments down below, I will definitely like draw like Deadpool or like more. I don't know, draw art related to Deadpool. If you guys type in maximum effort in the comments down below. Every boy, how?